Hi, right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to create websites, modern websites, using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Um, today we're going to be working in a program called Webflow. It is an online visual code editor. So if you've never used Webflow, um, you can go to webflow.com and get a free, um, a free account and it gives you access to a couple of different projects that you can create and try out the software with. You can go as far as you can with those projects, but if you want to do more than two, you have to actually get a paid account. So what I'm going to show you today is how to do like a large full screen uh, header. And that header is going to take up the full screen. It'll have some text in the middle and it'll have a nav bar across the top. It's a pattern that you've seen uh, all over the web and I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, to design this in Webflow. So first we have our body. Uh, this is just a blank HTML document. There's no, there are no other sections in here. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add our image. So to do that we go to section. We can just grab and drag and drop it right onto the body. And now our, uh, our HTML is starting to take structure a little bit. Um, we're going to call this section hero. That's going to be the ID. And we're going to give it the HTML tag of header. And then we're also going to give it a class of hero. Uh, so we, now we have our div up here. Um, we need to fill it with a background image. And the way we do that in Webflow is we come down to background. You click on the image. And it fills it with some a dummy image for now. But let's choose an image we can upload an image. Let's see. Let's take these guys. I like these guys. They're really uh, they're excited. And they're loving life. They're loving their work. And uh, let's make it cover so that it covers uh, the full height and width of uh, the container. Uh, I'm fine with it being top left. And then we need to make our container take up the entire uh, viewport screen. So what we do for that is we say 100 viewport height. So 100 VH makes sure that this covers 100% uh, percent of the height of whatever viewport it is. So whether it's mobile or desktop, it's going to take up uh, the full height. <coughs> So we have our image, and what we also want to do is we want to put some text here, and we want to put a nav bar up here. So let's let's go ahead and do the text first. And the way that we do the text is we can add what's uh, called a div block. It doesn't necessarily have to stay a div, uh, but it's called a div block. It's just essentially some sort of 100% width uh, block that you can use um, to hold anything. Uh, for this one, we're going to give it the class of hero text. And um, I want to make sure. Okay, well, let's just go to the heading. So we want to put a nice big bold heading in here. And we're going to say, we're going to say rock on. It's going to be kind of our tagline. Uh, before we get too far, let's go ahead and, and set. Um, let's set a font and the way that you can do that for um, the entire page is to click on body and then go down and set your font and it'll set the font for every single um, element underneath the body nested in the body let's just choose open sans and normal and we're gonna go ahead and choose uh, white for this text and then let's go ahead and uh, we'll add our subtext here. So let's just do a paragraph. So this is like uh, adding a P uh, tag in your uh, HTML. And we're going to make this also white. And then let's go ahead and um, let's make this flex before we decide how large we want this to be. Uh, so we have uh, the ability to set the display. So this is like saying uh, display block 
or display inline block or inline or flex or grid or even display none which would take it off the page completely uh, but what we want to do is we want to make this um, a flex item so that we can get these two things into the middle so we want to center center them so we make it flex and then now you see our two items are flexed and it's because we don't have this one inside it's not inside the right place see the paragraph is inside hero text or outside hero text it needs to be inside so we can actually just move it in like that and now they're all under hero text and so they're not flexing this this one is the one that's being flexed it's the flex child so once we get to uh, hero we can choose our horizontal or vertical flex uh, layout so horizontally we want it to be justified to the center and vertically we want it to be justified or aligned to the center so that centers everything uh, exactly like we want it to be if we go ahead and center this text we'll start to see things kind of shape up a little bit uh, we can set a maximum width on this to let's say uh, maybe 60 percent and then we can begin to style all of our um, all of our text so if we hold down shift and use the up arrow key uh, it will just give us a nice large heading so let's say 148 and then um, we also have to match that with line height puts everything at the appropriate distance and this is way too much text um, let's say we So we help you get over the roadblocks of your business so you can move forward. Um, and we can, again, we can just use uh, the shift and up key to make those things uh, a little bit larger, to make the font size a little larger. And let's match our line height. Okay, so we have, uh, it's just that easy to go ahead and, and create um, a Flexbox layout, put those things here into the center. And then um, next we're going to go with a uh, nav bar. But before we do that, this is starting to, it's a little bit too busy. And we can actually pull this text out a little bit by creating um, some sort of uh, an overlay, uh, color overlay over this image. Uh, and just like with the background property in CSS, this allows us to stack elements in the background. So we can use uh, a linear gradient, which I really like, or we could just use a solid color with, um, as long as we want this, the color to remain uniform throughout, we can use a solid color. And then we can actually um, create some opacity. So let's do black. So obviously we can't see anything now. Uh, but as we pull the opacity down, we begin to see more and more of the image. And if we get down to 40, maybe 30 so this is uh, the color 000 with the 0 0.3 um, alpha and so that helps this text to just just pop out just a little bit uh, you could also use a linear gradient <coughs> uh, to make that happen as well okay and we're almost there let's add our nav bar thankfully they actually have a pre-made nav bar here uh, as one of their component elements and you can literally just drag and drop that nav bar right onto the page um, now that's not where we want it because it's inside you know it's being flexed what we want is for that to be positioned up here at the top <clears throat> and what we can do is we can go to the positioning here and we have a uh, relative absolute and we have fixed um, I'm just gonna go ahead with uh, absolute positioning 
which takes it out of the flow of the document. And if that's ab absolutely positioned, then our hero needs to be explicitly relatively positioned. Okay. So let's go. And one way to navigate is to click into whatever element you want. And if you want to navigate up, we have this nice little breadcrumb here. So you can navigate up to the nav bar, click it, and then you've uh, clicked that entire nav bar section. So if we do zero, then that's going to put it right at the top. If we give it a width of 100%, then that's going to push it all the way across the page. And so now it's stuck to the top of our section, and that makes sure that this is centered again. Uh, we have a couple of different elements here. There's our brand. Uh, so we have our brand, and then we have our nav links. Um, the brand is just going to be, um, let's just put a little text logo in here. So just something real quick. So this company is called Forward, and they are helping you to move forward. All right, and I don't like this background. Uh, obviously, you could change that to any color that you wanted to. Uh, the background here is a triple D, and so you could make that, you know, that background anything that you wanted to. Uh, we're actually going to choose transparent, and we're just going to have a nice uh, header up here so you can see all of the all of the image. <coughs> Let's make all of the elements inside of here. Uh, let's just make them white. See if that works. Will that work? No. Okay. Let's do them individually so we can go over here to this and we can make it white. Try that again. Okay. And then we'll make each of our nav links uh, a white color also. And you can see here that it's added a class called nav link. So anytime you make a change to the CSS but you don't actually uh, give it an explicit class, then it gives it kind of a, a class based on what is the item okay so we could actually go back through and we can choose uh, that nav link class for all of these and so that every time that we make a change um, it changes all of the all of our nav links so if you wanted to go and change the color uh, to be something else you can see that it changes them all at the same time uh, <coughs> there's a heavy emphasis in webflow with uh, classes so if you don't like classes, you're going <laughs> to have a hard time with it, but um, you can already see that it's taken shape. We essentially have uh, everything that we need right here. Uh, these are all links. Um, one thing that we can do is we can establish a hover um, for these links. And so right here on the selector, you can see the different states. So there's the hover state and the press focused and visited state of links. And whenever we uh, enter into the hover state, this is like saying nav link uh, with the pseudo class of hover, then we can go in and we can change. So let's say we just want our links to be a little bit, um, to lose their, drop their opacity. So you can see what it looks like compared to the others. And when you hover over it, you can see that action, right? So uh, we can also come out of the hover state back to the normal state to the link state and then we can add a transition so down here in transitions and transforms we can say font color because that's what we're uh, transitioning and we say like 300 milliseconds and you can choose an easing pattern if you want and then when we come and we preview site you can see that we have a nice little transition there right on those links um, and from what I wanted to do, this is what we have, and this is uh, where we're at. 
you can go through and you can play with some of these things uh, when you use the nav um, when you use the nav what is it called the nav bar uh, you can go ahead and create a little nav uh, section here and so at um, mobile breakpoints it gives you that automatically so you can check that as well um, for our purposes we'll just leave it like that uh, if you wanted to come in every time you make a change let's say you wanted to make a change here with this section instead of being um, at the tablet size instead of it being 60 percent you wanted it to be at 80 percent you could do that uh, if you wanted to bring this down so that it covers a little bit more and if you wanted to change the background so that the background <coughs> itself uh, gets centered then you can see those changes happen in real time so then this gets a little bit bigger and when you get down to a tablet size you get down to a place where um, everything is recentered and you have your little icon up here All right, and so you would just keep doing that all the way down the line. Um, maybe you're happy with what that is, uh, the way it is, and that's just what you want to do. Um, if you have any questions about Webflow or you have any questions about this particular project, uh, please let me know and uh, leave them down in the comments section below. I really like Webflow. I like uh, being able to visually manipulate certain things, and I love just how easy it is to kind of pull things together and drag and drop them into um, into a section like this and then building sections on top of that is uh, super easy I hope to publish a decent series on how to make a, a full like a one-page website using Webflow and opening up some of the things uh, that are possible in Webflow like um, a database like collection um, <clears throat> which allows you to have dynamic content in an HTML website and uh, some other things uh, that Webflow allows you to do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.